Hey everyone, Lewis here for Pixel Surplus and today I'm going to teach you how to use the vanishing point tool in Adobe Photoshop. This is going to allow you to make crisp, clean mockups for your designs. And as an added bonus, I'm going to teach you how to use the stamp tool in perspective so you can get rid of any of that unneeded clutter. Let's jump right in. So let's begin by opening up the photo you want to use. The photo I'll be using for this demonstration is a photo I found from Unsplash. Link for this photo will be found in the description if you'd like to follow along at home. We're going to be using an awesome tool inside Photoshop. It's called Vanishing Point and to access it, head to Filter, Vanishing Point. Now that Adobe Photoshop has opened the Vanishing Point window, I'm going to look at the tools on the left hand side. The one that I want you to focus on for now is the Create Plane tool. You can select that by clicking here or using C on your keyboard. Now that I have this tool accessed, I'm going to pin the four corners of this large Nike advertisement. It's likely that your photo won't have clear and obvious perspective lines like mine. So take some time and really think about the perspective of the photo. For example, if this billboard wasn't here, I could use the roof, the walls of the building, and even the brickwork throughout the building as my horizontal line. One quick thing to note is that Adobe Photoshop's pretty smart, so if it thinks your perspective doesn't make any sense, it's going to make your grid red or yellow. Just make sure that you've found the right perspective and that your grid's blue before moving forward. Once you're happy with your perspective grid, like I am, around my billboard, I can grab my anchor points and drag them to match the entire wall. How cool is that? So you built your perspective in Adobe Photoshop, but as you can see, there's still a massive piece of artwork right where I want my design to go. So now we're gonna learn how to use the stamp tool in perspective to remove unwanted artwork and blemishes. While still in the vanishing point window, you can access the stamp tool by selecting this icon or by hitting S on your keyboard. Let's take a quick look at the settings of the stamp tool. There's diameter, hardness, opacity, and healing. For the diameter, I like to change it depending on the size and scale of the artwork I'm working on. And of course, you can increase or decrease the diameter by hitting the open or closed square brackets. Hardness, I like to leave on zero so it's nice and soft. Opacity, I always leave on 100. And healing is an interesting one. With healing on, Photoshop's going to try and be smart. It's going to match the surrounding areas, colors, textures, and tones to try and give you the best result. By turning healing off, Photoshop doesn't try and do anything clever. You just get a straightforward copy of the area you selected. I'm not gonna say one or the other is better. It's about using both to find the best results. So let's learn how the stamp tool works. First, select the stamp tool with S on your keyboard. Then we're going to make a selection of the plain wall. I can do this by holding Alt on my keyboard and selecting above the Nike logo. For something small like the Nike logo, I'd probably turn healing on because I'll be able to remove the entire logo without having to stop. Then I'm going to place my brush with my selection over the Nike logo, trying to match up the brickwork correctly. Then I simply click and hold and paint or stamp over my logo. Then I release. As you can see, Photoshop did a great job of stamping that logo. Now let's move on to something a little more challenging like the text. For the text, I'm going to be turning healing off so I'm in better control. First, I'm going to make a selection underneath and simply stamp over the letter E. I find it best to take small sections at a time and the closer you can get your selection using Alt, to the piece that you're trying to remove, the better the brickwork, the lighting, and the tone will match. 
It's definitely going to take more time, but the result is going to be worth it. I'm just going to keep working on the text until I've stamped away all of it and I'm happy with the results. Remember, you're learning something new, so mistakes will happen. Just hit Ctrl Z on your keyboard to undo. If you're following along at home, feel free to pause the video now and take as much time as you need. I'll be back to talk about how we're going to remove the large figure in our billboard. I'm going to begin by making a selection to the left of him in that large white space and increase the size of my brush to try and speed up the process. With healing turn off, I'm going to slowly but carefully stamp over the illustration of the man and replace him with the white wall below. If you're following along at home, once again, feel free to pause the video and take as much time as you need. It's a slow process, but you will become quicker and you will be happy with the results in the end. And finally, the last bit that's a little tricky is to remove where the legs touched the border of our billboard. It's as simple as just making a selection on the edge of the billboard like so, and matching it up to the rest of the billboard and just stamping over. It might take a little time, but it's gonna look great. Awesome, now I've got a white brick billboard that I can apply my designs to to create realistic mockups in the future. Not only that, but you've also learned how to use the stamp tool in perspective in Adobe Photoshop. Now it's time to add our design to our new perspective mockup. I created this piece of design using Mojito font. This handy semi-condensed font includes clean and textured styles and is perfect for both your modern and vintage projects. This font can be found at Pixel Surplus and the links will be in the description below. Go check it out. So I'm going to begin by copying and pasting my vector design into Photoshop. I'm also going to select to paste as a smart object. Now that my design's inside Photoshop, I'm just going to increase the scale. I'm going to make sure that I'm working inside the vector smart object layer, and I'm going to press Ctrl A to select everything, and then Ctrl C to copy. Next, I'm going to turn off the visibility for my smart object layer, and I'm going to create a new layer above that. Working inside my new layer, I'm going to head to Filter, Vanishing Point, and I'm going to hit Control V to paste. I should now see my design inside the Vanishing Point window. Using the Marquee tool, I'm going to drag my logo onto the perspective grid, and just like magic, our logo is now in the correct perspective. If you'd like to increase or decrease the scale of your artwork, hit Ctrl T to transform, and then grab one of the four corners, and whilst holding shift, scale proportionately. 
Once you're happy with the scale, spend some time maneuvering your design around your perspective grid. Then press OK in the top of the vanishing point window. Great, now it's time to add those finishing touches. Let's zoom in so we can see all of those small details. Double click on layer one to bring up the layer style panel. Make sure that you're working inside the blending options mode. We're going to be working on the underlying layer slider. Head to the right hand side and whilst holding Alt, grab the white slider. Now, slowly drag the left portion of the slider to the left until you start to see the texture from the wall come through your design. Now, click and hold on the right side of the white slider and begin to adjust that as well. Take some time to play around until you find your desired effect. If you're following along at home, I've gone for 165 and 195, but your mileage might vary and it really depends on the effect that you're going for. Once you're happy, press OK in the top right of the layers style panel. And finally, let's edit the color of our design. You can do this by making sure that you're working inside layer one, heading down to effects and color overlay. Now click on the color picker and choose the color that works best for your design. And there you have it. How to create a realistic mock-up for your designs using the vanishing point tool in Adobe Photoshop, as well as how to use the stamp tool inside the vanishing point window to remove things from your photography. Please like and subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any of our future content. And we here at Pixel Surplus want to know what you think. So jump in the comments and let us know if you enjoyed the video and what you'd like to see from us next. Head to the description where you'll find links to both the photograph and the font I used today. Seriously, check Mojito out. It's absolutely fantastic. As well as the link to Pixel Surplus. Pixel Surplus is home to the best free fonts, textures, mockups, templates, and tutorials as well as the best font bundles on this planet. I'm talking about the highest quality fonts at the lowest prices. Go check it out right now. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day everyone.